Good morning, everybody. My name is Chris Walasha, and I'm the Chief Information Security Officer for the Department of Health and Human Services. Happy to be here. Thank you for taking the time to come listen to us and a very talented panel that you're going to be introduced here shortly. A little bit about me first. I joined HHS about nine months ago. Before that, I worked for National Research Corporation, a company that assesses patient satisfaction in near real time. After you leave a doctor's office or you're discharged from the hospital, you get a quick five question survey on your cell phone that asks you, how do you feel? Do you understand your discharge instructions? Do you have your medication? And any of these questions that reach a certain threshold uh, trigger a call from the uh, discharge nurse. It's real time patient feedback, helping the healthcare industry move from a reimbursement model to a patient centered patient satisfaction model. Before that, I worked for uh, the University of Nebraska, advising the president and board of regents on cybersecurity. Any Big Ten uh, people in the room here? Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. Uh, before that, I was at the VA, uh, oversaw the cybersecurity operations for their NOC, SOC, and field security service. 150 hospitals and a lot of in all of their uh, uh, regional facilities. CIO of the Military Sealift Command. Before that, Missile Defense Agency, Defense Intelligence Agency. 28 years in the Navy. Before that, I started my career in the Navy on submarines. And the first computers I worked on had hand cranks on the front and gears inside. And the hacking problem was a little different back then because you needed heavy tools to get into these things. Uh, but as uh, computers and cybersecurity have grown up and evolved, so have I. And that's why I'm here to talk to you today. Uh, I have just a little bit, uh, maybe two paragraphs of prepared remarks, and then I want to get into what we're here to talk about, that's cyber threat intelligence. HHS cybersecurity is evolving the nature of the healthcare information security problem, moving from the right side of an event, react and respond to the left side of an event, prevent, detect. We have to move the healthcare industry, both inside government and outside government, to the left side of the cyber attack problem. Collaboration across the HHS enterprise while creating and, and utilizing modern tools and capabilities, strategic partnerships with vendors and contractors will enhance security and improve the overall risk posture for the entire healthcare sector. The Healthcare Cybersecurity Communications and Integration Center, or HealthKick as we're calling it, is a 24 7 operation of cybersecurity situational awareness, incident response and management to act as a nexus of cyber and communications integration for not only HHS, but for the healthcare and public health sector. It's a central location for information sharing across HHS with and between other federal government partners and the healthcare sector. And it'll provide data and tools to aid in the fusion efforts to support threat analysis, efforts that are vital to the healthcare sector. The intent of the health kick is not to replace current capabilities or functionality or services provided by the end kick. The H kick is designed to fuse data, share information, and draw conclusions that support cyber preparedness, awareness, and resiliency for the healthcare sector. Working in close partnership with the end kick and other federal government agencies, the H kick intends to do this. The stakeholders within the HKIC, those representatives from the operating divisions that are joining us in this effort, our incident response teams, partnerships with people like the NHISAC and High Trust, other vendors and partners in this sector will help us raise the level of awareness and preparedness in the healthcare sector. Section 405 of the Cybersecurity Act of 2015 calls for improving cybersecurity in the healthcare and public health sector. The act directs HHS to collaborate with stakeholders to establish a resource for cost effectively reducing cybersecurity risks for the range of healthcare organizations and to use the Healthcare Industry Cybersecurity Task Force Report to establish a plan for implementing Title I of this division. It requires a plan for implement, implementing CISA so federal government and healthcare industry partners may share actionable cyber threat indicators and defensive measures in real time. The HKIC will do this. 
that's for my prepared remarks. Let's talk now about why we're really here. HHS, a unique, diverse, and distributed organization, as you may know, 11 operating divisions, about 20 more small operating divisions and staff divisions, the likes of which include the Food and Drug Administration, the National Institutes for Health, Centers for Disease Control, Indian Health Service, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, a long list of others. HHS has a unique 360 degree view of the healthcare sector and the cyber threats that are attempting to penetrate our defenses. Take the Food and Drug Administration, protecting billions of dollars of intellectual property belonging not only to the FDA but to the big pharma and, and uh, organizations that are producing the next wonder drug, the next cure. They defend, at FDA, they defend over 500 million attempts on their networks every month. Why? Because bad actors want to get that information so they don't have to spend the R&D themselves. They steal it and, and copy it and produce the next big thing. At the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, they process a million dollars a minute in payments to providers, payers, and patients. Their cybersecurity issues are dealing with fraud detection and how to stop people from fraudulently claiming Medicare and Medicaid benefits. At the National Institutes of Health and the Centers for Disease Control, those folks are working in open collaborative environments across states and across international boundaries. Thousands of researchers working to identify indicators of Alzheimer's disease, breaking down the human genome to find out what sets one person different from another and makes them susceptible to Alzheimer's. They're trying to cure cancer. At CDC, they're trying to solve for the next Ebola or Zika. So terabytes of information a day are being shared across international boundaries. That's quite a different cybersecurity problem than FDA or CMS has. And there are dozens of examples, but HHS has this unique 360 degree view because we see it all. Our operating divisions have come together under the leadership of Beth Ann Kaloran, our CIO. All the CIOs of the uh, operating divisions have signed on to a strategic plan that says a couple of things. That they're going to work together on IT purchases and modernization. Uh, that they're going to focus IT investments on cybersecurity where the risk is the highest to the organization. They're supporting the HKIC and providing talent, personnel, resources to make sure that this outreach that we're starting with the healthcare and public health sector is valuable from the start. These CIOs have come together and decided to focus on high value assets, reducing the reliance on legacy IT, pushing forward shared services, the CDM or uh, continuous diagnostics and medication model and developing a workforce for the future. HHS 360 degree view of the healthcare sector includes the cyber threats that we're here to talk about today. Now a couple of years ago, uh, there's some people here in the audience who uh, worked at HHS or VA or the Defense Health Agency, decided to come together in a room and talk about cyber threat sharing. This happened down in Atlanta a few years ago. They built something called the HTOC, the Health Threat Operations Center. And these guys, representing their agencies, HHS, VA, and Defense Health Agency, started tapping into high side and low side cyber threat intelligence. And it wasn't necessarily directed at the healthcare center, it was all of the cyber threat intelligence that was circulating in the intel community and across federal government. And leveraging resources and relationships, they built this capability to alert the federal government healthcare agencies on cyber threats focused at them. Pretty novel concept and a very hard problem to solve. Why? Have you ever seen cyber threat intelligence, the regular feeds that come through? They're incredibly technical. They often lack context. They indicate that there's a cyber threat out there, but they give no real indication or direction as to who it's targeted at and what the preventative measures might be. This HTOC capability started with VA, Defense Health Agency, and HHS to define what cyber threat intelligence means to the healthcare 
sector inside government. And they've grown this capability. It's a few more guys now than I think it, it was in the beginning. But uh, the thought was create cyber threat intelligence with context to describe how it affects healthcare and then publish that, get it out widely across HHS, VA, and DA, Defense Health Agency. So when the Cybersecurity Sharing Act of 2015 came along, HHS leveraged the language in that document, that legislation, to improve upon what had been done at the HTOC. And that's where we're going today. About a year ago, HHS started partnering with Carnegie Mellon, the people that created the NKIC, started conversations with the leadership of the NKIC to say, we understand, DHS, you've got the overall government cybersecurity lead. Your DHS is a sector-specific agency for nine of the 16 critical infrastructure sectors. HHS is the sector-specific agency for healthcare, for one. And that's where our focus is going to be. So we had these conversations, many of them, and uh, some of them contentious. Folks here in the room that were involved in those know what I'm talking about. It wasn't immediately clear what the HKIC was trying to do. Were we stepping on DHS's toes? Were we trying to steal mission or uh, funding or clout? And the answer to that was a resounding no. We are not trying to duplicate what DHS is doing at the end kick. We're trying to complement it and focus those resources that are widely available down and into the healthcare and public health sector. And that's what the purpose of the HKIC is. To leverage cyber threat intelligence that's being produced right now, automated threat indicators, all the tools that you know are available out there come to the, through DHS and the intel agencies to the HKIC where we provide context, we add or take away uh, the signal to noise ratio. There's a ton of cyber threat intelligence out there. How much of it is focused on healthcare? Well, a growing amount, but we're collecting that, passing it through a fusion center, a watch floor, a number of analysts to provide context. Now, this isn't meant to serve the large pharmas, the large healthcare plans who have mature cybersecurity organizations, IT organizations, or security organizations. It's not meant to serve them because they have the tools and the talent to consume automated threat indicator sharing. But that's only about 20% of the healthcare sector. We're focusing our efforts on the small and medium providers, the rural providers, the one and two doctor or physician shops, or offices. Think of those places in your hometown where you seek medical care. It might be a doctor, a nurse, a physician's assistant, an office manager. They don't have IT staffs. They certainly don't have IT security staff. They might have an IT savvy person in the office who changes the toner and the copier at the end of the day, and they may look at a list of patches and pick three that they try to apply to their local server. That's the folks that the HKIC is trying to get to, to provide best practices and information, guidance that is industry led and voluntary to help them Prepare for the next cyber attack. That's the HKIC's focus. The problem, and you're going to hear from some very talented panel members who are knee-deep in this, is that cyber threat intelligence comes in many different forms. There are automated threat indicator feeds that people can sign up for. There are services that you can buy in industry, very good services, that help an organization grow and mature a cyber threat organization but it lacks context. There is so much information out there that it's hard to know where to turn. It's hard to know what to do with. So the HKIC and our partnerships with the NKIC, industry, organizations like NHISAC, High Trust, and others are gonna help define that. So we're here today to share what we know about this issue with you Ask for your input. I hope it's a very collaborative exchange between the audience and our panel members so that you can help us define what we need to do next. I'm the first one to tell you, government cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone. I, in HHS, we have a 30% vacancy rate in IT. In my shop alone, I have 100, I'm authorized 150 IT security people. I have just over 100. can't compete with the 
competitors in the marketplace for cyber talent. So we're going to build partnerships. We don't call you vendors anymore. We call you strategic partners. We're pushing some of our services to the cloud. HHS is a FedRAMP authorizer, and we have about nine large cloud service providers in our portfolio, including Amazon Web Services, Salesforce, and others. We're pushing more of our business to the cloud in the next two years because we trust it. Our relationships with cloud service providers and the third-party assessors that we employ to check on security, configuration, vulnerability, patching, and all that stuff has matured, and we are moving that direction. We're moving away from MTIPS. I'm sorry, we're moving away from TIC, premise-based TIC, to MTIPS as a service in the next 24 months. MTIPS in the cloud, if you will. Engaging with strategic partners to understand what that trans uh, what that uh, transfer of services might look like. We have a lot of great initiatives going on at HHS, especially in the cyber world. 